Welcome to the first edition of KG Clip. Hi, I am Aneka Bali, a research scholar of Chemical Engineering Department, IIT Kharagpur. And today it is my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Dr. Nandini Bhandaru, who has recently won the Young Scientist Award from the Indian Science Congress Association. She was awarded in the theme Engineering Science for the year 2017 for her outstanding contribution to fundamental research in nano patterning of soft polymeric blends and their application. We also have with us her supervisor, Professor Ravi Brata Mukherjee. They work in the lab instability and soft patterning at Chemical Engineering Department, IIT Kharagpur. You recently received an award from Indian Science Congress Association. What is it all about? This award is given by Indian Science Congress Association and it recognizes young and outstanding talent in diverse disciplines of science and technology. And they give one award in each different discipline. I received this award uh, for the theme of Engineering Sciences in, for the year 2017 and uh, it was based on the research work that I did during my PhD at the Instability and Soft Patterning Lab Department of Chemical Engineering IIT Kharagpur under the supervision of Dr. Ravi Pratham Mukherjee. As you previously got an award from the Amer uh, European Materials Research Society and now this. So tell us something about the fascinating part of your work. So my work is mainly related to creating and ordering things at nanoscale and as we all know, nano means 10 to the power minus 9 meters and to give an idea about how small it is, it is uh, things at nano scale are around 1000 part of the width of a human hair. So at such small length scale, creating, an order, uh, uh, creating things and creating ordered or pattern surfaces which in fact have most of application in different areas and I have worked in some of these areas. So creating things at nanoscale itself is extremely challenging because our hands do not work at such a small length scale and even the con conventional machines or instrument fail, uh, such as robotic arms or tweezers fail to create uh, such structures. And this is mainly because the forces at nanoscale are completely different from our microscopic world and in fact gravity which is one of the most important forces is completely absent at nanoscale. My work is mainly related to modulating these forces at nanoscale such, such that the things organize by themselves. This is known as self-organization or self-assembly. Uh, so I have uh, mainly uh, worked with polymeric uh, materials and created nanostructures utilizing the concept of self-assembly in thin polymer films. So there is this kind of instability in ultra-thin polymer films and I have utilized these instabilities to create nanostructures out of these thin films. So one major limitation of such self-organization process is that the structures are haphazard or random in nature and my work was mainly focused on aligning or ordering these structures by utilizing some kind of templates. Uh, and I have also worked with some complex system comprising of two materials which can be in the form of a blend or a bilayer and have created uh, some exotic complex nanostructures out, uh, out of them. So the novelty is that we have developed techniques uh, and methodologies to create uh, nanostructures uh, and multifunctional surfaces from multi-material systems by uh, modulating the forces at nanoscale without depending on any major instruments or devices. What are the applications of such techniques and nano pattern surfaces? So, uh, nano structured surfaces or na uh, nano structured um, uh, nano pattern surfaces find enormous application in wide variety of a wide uh, variety of areas. And I will give some very basic examples. Structural color, which is if you if we see the backside of the CD, we see rainbow color, which is actually due to the presence of nanometer tracks in which we store our data. So structural color is one of the main, uh, one of the very important properties of nanostructures. Uh, another uh, property can be self-cleaning surfaces or super hydrophobicity. So we see these uh, tall buildings with glass facades and uh, they remain shining because the surfaces are self-cleaning. So they don't allow the dust to sit on these surfaces it, and it is mainly because of the presence of nanostructures. Another thing that we see in nature is lotus leaf. Lotus leaf, on the top of the lotus leaf, a water drop generally rolls down. 
and this is actually because of the presence of tiny uh, structures on the surface of the nucleus. So these are the, some of the pro properties that can be achieved by incorporating nanostructures on the surface. And but uh, the applications are very interesting. But the major challenge is creation of these uh, structures. So the first part of my work is, was mainly focused on developing techniques for creation of these structures. And then I have utilized these structures to demonstrate mainly two applications. One is related to microfluidics, and one is related to nanobiotechnology. So, as I mentioned, uh, these structures can lead to excellent cell cleaning properties. So, we created some gradient surfaces having gradient topography, that is, gradient geometry of nanostructures, and we can uh, we were able to achieve surfaces having gradient wettability. So, which means that one part of the surface is water loving, another part of the surface is water hating. So, such surfaces can have excellent self cleaning properties. And on the other hand, we have utilized the nanostructures that, uh, that come out of polymer blend. We have utilized some tall nanostructures to create uh, uh, surfaces which, on which there is a uh, difference in the cell, uh, cell growth rate. So, we studied the growth rate of normal and pre cancers oral fibroblast and we were able to see that such surfaces, such nanostructured surfaces actually enhance the growth rate of normal cells and inhibit the growth of precancerous cells. So this gives us a clue to develop a therapeutic patch which can be used post-surgery to el eliminate the recurrence of oral cancer. So uh, it's indeed very pleasing for me to see that Bandini has now won the Indian Science Congress Association's Young Scientist Award, which is considered to be a very prestigious award in the country. But this is not for the first time Bandini has got an award. She has got recognition even internationally. She got the European Materials Research Society's uh, Young Student, Young Graduate Student Award last year, which is sort of a very rare feat for a student who is working for a doctoral thesis in India to get this award. This was also highly publicized and well appreciated by the scientific community in the country. What in fact makes Nandini's work so fascinating is the fact is she tries to organize things at the nanoscale. Now we all know about nano which is very small and we are all carried away by the buzzword nanotechnology. But what we really do not appreciate is the situation at the nanoscale is completely different than what we see in our day-to-day -day world. In the day-to-day -day world everything is dominated by gravity. But nano, even sitting in our own world, we are almost talking about a zero gravity situation and therefore the conventional approaches for organizing things do not work. And that's exactly what is the hallmark or buzzword of Nandini's research. Her work is to confine or control the forces prevailing at the nano scale in such a way so that she can create ordered structures over large areas. And films or surfaces with this type of structures having nanoscale features a wide application. She has made those structures that, that was non trivial and now we are in a position to sort of explore some of these uh, applications. Thank you Professor Rabirata Mukherjee. Thank you Dr. Nandini Bhandaru. We hope many more such commendable research should take place from this laboratory. Signing off for now, see, uh, see you in the next edition of KGPM.